So today, NVIDIA released a brand new GPU, and that's the 3090 Ti. Now, it's a very expensive GPU. There are some surprises. Should you buy it? If you're in the market for a high-end GPU, are there better options? How's the pricing look like? How does the market availability look like? Well, I'll tell you what. Look here, at least in the local store, in the morning they had 12 of these in stock, and look, they still have 10 of them as of right now. So this has been several hours after the release. I can at least say that that the launch was a little bit better than all of the other GPUs from last year and especially during the beginning of RTX 3000. Is it going to be worth it over a 3090? I mean look at some of these performance benchmarks from Linus Tech Tips. As you can see, not really a much bigger difference, generally 8 to 12 percent. The bigger story here is, is going to be pricing and availability. This is certainly better stock than I've seen on any other launch recently. They're still in stock as the time of this video in different Micro Center stores. They only sold a couple, it seems, in some places. Even Newegg had them in stock for a pretty long time after they first popped up on the website. Even the original RTX 3090 sold out extremely quickly. First, let's discuss the pricing of this GPU. The MSRP is $1,999. Now, you may be thinking that doesn't sound bad if you're looking at 30 90s on the market right now because most of them honestly are that price or more especially if you're used to all of the terrible pricing we've seen in the last several months remember the original 3090 was supposed to be 14.99 but that's the founder's edition and things have changed since then most 3090s seem to fall somewhere between 2000 to 2200 dollars so in the way the 3090 ti is kind of priced right at the retail price of the 3090 now previously the 3090 was announced early January to release at the end of the month. That's been delayed. If it was released back then, you can bet this price would have been higher. Right now, we're seeing historically much lower prices and better availability than we have been during the last year or so. Some people originally thought that a 3090 Ti could come in considerably more than around $2,000. There were even some people thinking around $4,000. It was going to be a very rare model. Apparently, that's not really it. It seems like $1,999 is going to be the base MSRP, and you can actually find other non founder edition GPUs for that much. For example, the one I've seen, I've seen the Asus Tough 3090 Ti that was in stock on Newegg for a little while, and the local Micro Center stores still have the 3090 for the One 3. The most expensive one is $21.99, and they do have what they call the black version, which is $19.99. As of the time of this video, which is several hours after they opened, those are still in stock in several stores. So that shows you there's no market for scalpers because it's already so expensive. Generally, if people can get it in a store, they're not really going to buy it from somebody on their Facebook marketplace or wherever else. And then the appetite for 3090 Ti's in general are just not really as much as it was before. Previously, even 3090's at this price several weeks ago would sell instantly. I would never see it at my local store, for example, in stock for more than a few hours. Even if it was a 3090 Strix or for the One 3, typically they would sell very, very fast. During the last two weeks or so, those same 3090's have stayed in stock more and more. And now the 3090 Ti, even though it's still roughly around the same price, as those 3090s because remember none of them are $1,500 unless you get it from Best Buy the Founders Edition which by the way the Founders Edition 3090 which Best Buy will also sell you the Founders Edition um, it's not on right now it still says coming soon but it's also $1,099 the same price as the base models from EVGA and Asus etc so Definitely very interesting to see this pricing. While it is very high for the performance that you get compared to $1,500, this is from Linus Tech Tips, their video that they did. I think these gaming benchmarks kind of illustrate the small performance increase that you're going to get on the 3090 Ti. Of course, a little bit faster memory, a little bit more CUDA cores. Typically, what I've been seeing in different reviews across the board, you seem to get around maybe 8 to 12% on average better with the 3090 Ti. So most likely, even for very high-end gamers, it's probably not going to be worth that sort of bump. Even if you have a 3090 or 3080 Ti, you're only going to see probably roughly 10% better depending on the game. Now, even for content creation, it's going to be the same thing, a little bit better. But certainly, if you want that big breakthrough in performance, most likely we're going to have to wait until the RTX 4000. Something that this GPU does pack a lot of, though, in order to get that, squeeze that little bit of performance out of the 3090, which was already a 
pretty good GPU. Power consumption is uh, pretty outrageous, actually. The 4 one 3 is already basically 500 watts. Now, if we see some more specialized models like the Kingpin come out uh, in the future, you can bet some of these are going to be pushing probably closer to 600 watts. 500 watts is definitely a lot. Now, NVIDIA recommends an 850 watt power supply, but let's be honest, if you're running like a 12900K and you know a lot of fans and components, and sort of a 3090 Ti, 850 watts probably are really not going to cut it. You're going to need at least a thousand watt for a single GPU. That's what they really would recommend. And if you're going to be running even more power hungry components, you're probably going to need 1200 watts or more. And if you dare put two of these in your system, I would say 15, 1600 watt power supplies are going to be a very, very minimum. I mean, just the GPUs, if you have two of them in there, like if you're rendering or something like that, that's already going to pull a thousand watts. Imagine a high-end processor at another maybe 300 watts plus some other components, you're going to be squeezing that 1500 watt limit very, very closely. 1600 watts even, maybe pushing it a little bit too close, which then you're very close to the limits of a typical home outlet, at least in the United States. So power consumption is definitely going to be one of the biggest stories here. The pricing stays high in terms of retail, but in terms of the general market, I think that's really what it should have been priced at. I had imagined before if this sort of GPU shortage was bad as it was before, we would have seen maybe $2,400, maybe even $2,999 during a really bad GPU shortage. But it seems like things having let up a little bit with better pricing and availability of most other GPUs have bought this price considerably lower than I think Nvidia typically would have wanted to raise it to and this price is already definitely pretty high because it's not selling anywhere near as fast as it would if it was priced on a value proposition scale like the original 3080 at 699 those even today sell almost immediately because it's still a great price to performance uh, you know choice it's amazing for the 699 if you get that especially the founders edition you're getting amazing performance 3090 ti versus a 3080 of course it's faster of course you have more gigabytes of vram but but for a typical gamer, that difference, is it really worth three times the price? Definitely not. Diminishing returns certainly does hit pretty hard here. And this GPU basically is just sort of perfecting what the 3090 should have been. There are going to be a lot of benefits actually compared to the 3090 after you get away from the price. The cooler seems to be much improved. Now you have the VRAM on the bottom of the card. The 3090s are notorious for having problems cooling that VRAM. Very fast GDDR6X. So certainly I expect to see a considerable amount of improvements across the board in different cooling scenarios which, judging from the size of this GPU from different reviews, definitely a much beefier cooler, especially on the higher end models. So that's definitely a plus. I mean, with greater power, definitely you need a lot more cooling capability. So then here's the question. Should you buy this 3090 Ti? Well, if your budget was already in the market for a 3090, this is already basically the price you were looking at anyway. So you might as well get the fastest, best version. And it actually seems to be fairly available too, much more compared to other GPUs, at least on the initial launch day. If you were there, definitely within the first hour, you probably were able to get one. And and as of right now, different stores, if you're lucky enough to live near Micro Center, have them. And Best Buy is still going to be doing the drop of the Founders Edition. So definitely a lot of things pointing in that direction. I guess you just have to accept the very high price, but that's the nature of the GPU market now. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about this GPU down below. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.